Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Justine, that's me, and Matthew Johnson are here every other week. We love to bring on farmers and all kinds of food producers that are part of our community. We love to hear the background and the history of these individuals that grow our food, the background of these companies, what motivates them, the partnerships that enable them to be created and initiated and thrive, and how that all fits into our food system here on Oahu and throughout the state. Um, in fact, speaking statewide, we have a special guest spanning multiple islands here today. Matt, if you could introduce our guest. Yeah, thanks, Justine. Um, so today is our first time we've actually had a, a rancher, a cattleman on the show. So with us today is Bobby Ferreras. Mm -hmm. Ferreras. Uh -huh. Ferreras. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I just asked him like 30 seconds before the show started. Still didn't quite get it. Uh, with Kanoa. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks so for having us. we have a lot to go over and not a lot of time, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, Bob, why don't you go ahead and just give us a little background on yourself, a little bit about uh, growing up on Kauai and ranching and uh, a little bit of that. Sure, sure. Again, thanks for having us here. Ranchers don't get a lot of camera time, but it's about time we do and tell our story a little bit. So, um, yeah, third generation rancher um, on Kauai where we feel the most favorable grass growing climate is. Um, my granddad always had cattle around um, growing up as a little kid and um, my dad um, got involved and grew the ranch a little bit more. We grew up rodeoing quite a bit, me and my brother. Mm -hmm. So always had a lot of horses and cattle around and um, we both, my brother and I both left the islands to go and rodeo full time. And um, that took me, uh, ended up in Kansas lived there through a couple of extreme winters and summers and decided to come home to a place where I know grass grows every day without any struggles and nobody needs to wear uh, thermals or uh, uh, fight off heat stroke. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So came back to Kauai um, and um, started to make good use of all of the fallowed ground from the cane and pineapple companies back in out of Hawaii mm -hmm. and um, put together a commercial herd of cows and um, got back into ranching full time. Nice. And then so, and even before you, or during while you're uh, doing the ranching, mm -hmm. uh, you have a history of uh, actually doing professional um, roping. Yes, yes. Uh, that um, was a passion of mine since I was a little kid. I think uh, started around eight years old or so. Um, and I and I never really thought about it until I got asked a couple of years ago, you know, how it started, because my dad didn't rodeo, my granddad never rodeoed either, but, um, and I couldn't even remember exactly where it started, but yeah, yeah rodeoed since I was like eight years old, and there was a, a circuit in Hawaii, it was called the uh, Hawaii Cowboys Association and um, the HRCA, and uh, did that all through grade school and high school, and um, so it was a dream of mine to go and do it full time. Tried that, never made much of a living doing it, yeah, yeah. but uh, learned a lot. It was it was a great deal, and got to see a lot of country that way. And um, but yeah, it, it was a, it was good. And still, we still compete, not as much as I used to. Uh, Kuno has been taking up a lot of time, but it's it was a good diversion, I think. Yeah, nice. Um, so yeah, uh, why don't we get into and talk about Kunoa? So sure. it's a relatively new venture, but bringing in a lot of the skill sets and the ranching we've been doing in the past. And yeah, yeah. give us a little background on Kunoa. Yeah, so Kanoa Cattle Company has been around a while now. Um, there's five of us co-founders that put this together. Um, Kanoa tries to make sure we look at it from both aspects, from the ranching side of it, um, you know, the, what the ranchers were missing and needed in the industry, mm -hmm. um, and from the wholesale retail side, you know, what the consumer is expecting. Um, labels, as we all know, have been getting more and more confusing, mm -hmm. uh, promising things on labels that are all good, but yet so uh, they're going in so many directions anymore. So kind of um, like all natural and yeah, there's so many different criteria. Not on this, pro that, grass fed and gr not grass fed, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And so again, Kuno was put together from the rancher and the consumer side, and you know how do you um, uh, make make those meet in the middle, which we felt f um, wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. um, Hawaii was short of. Um, process and cold storage and so it was limiting the finished animals that stayed in Hawaii 
and Sukunoa focused on the um, the pieces of the puzzle that were missing, so to mm -hmm. speak. Mm -hmm. And so we're a vertically integrated company. Um, Kunoa owns a large herd of cows, about 2,000 cows mm -hmm. on Kauai, mm -hmm. um, and has just recently um, taken over the Hawaii's largest um, butchery uh, right here in Honolulu, mm -hmm. um, and has added that to its uh, its portfolio, if you would. And so, again, ranching cattle uh, through the processing part and mm -hmm. then has a branding marketing side of it also. That's unique here in Hawaii because there's a lot of ranches, there's a lot of cattle, but this is the only processing facility in Hawaii? Uh, for In Honolulu. In Honolulu, um, okay. There are others in the state. Uh, there's two in the Big Island, three on Kauai, one on Molokai. Um, but this is the only one in, in Honolulu. It's the largest in the state also, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean for the cattle that's being, uh, because without these processing centers, that's a lot of cattle going to the mainland. They're raised here, but uh, sent over to the mainland to get processed and then sent back, that's which correct. is a huge footprint. Right, it, it's, and that was part of what Kuno wanted to fix a little, um, is the amount of cattle that we're leaving and not being able to stay just because facilities, there weren't enough facilities that way. Um, we, we don't like the fact that, you know, we don't, the rancher doesn't be able to see their product go to full term, mm -hmm. um, but it just wasn't, a, the facilities just weren't available. Mm. Um, the great things that are happening in Hawaii with the local food push, I think, has also and opened a lot of doors for the cattle industry. Um, we raise great cattle here you know the, the climate is so conducive to what we do um, mm. grass grows every day mm. um, so it's just the right time I think the other thing is the the ag footprint is really changing right um, with cane and pineapple gone now there's so much fallow ground that's mm. available to farming mm -hmm. all kinds of farming um, that I think it's 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 the right time to expand the cattle industry that way, mm -hmm. and, and and the farming, this other supporting agriculture entity. And so I just want to like still like talk about the significance of of the the slaughterhouse and your guys' involvement with that. And like Justine was saying, where a lot of times the the cattle that's raised here, if it's grass fed, here in Hawaii, um, actually actually has to be shipped to the mainland for for finishing. So go to get finishing in in a feedlot or something, right. slaughtered there, processed there, and then those cuts would then be shipped back to the markets here in Hawaii. Right. Wow. Yeah, north of 90% of all of the uh, red meat protein, so beef, um, comes is imported. Mm -hmm. um, we lose track as the ranchers if they leave, if it leaves Hawaii, we don't yeah. know if that one's coming back or not. Right, it just right, gets right. into the commodity uh, market. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, yeah, north of 90% of the red meat is imported. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Kuno feels that that's, it's a, it's a very volatile system, mm -hmm. um, hence the show, right? I mean, it, we, we don't all realize exactly how volatile we are to outside inputs for, right. for basics, you know, mm -hmm. basics, food, protein, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so again, you know, Kuno thought that that's a great um, um, part we can play in, in trying to bring some of that food security back home. Yeah. You know, we have the production ability and so these pieces in the ag uh, sector is just uh, haven't been um, built out yet yeah. and that's part of what we're trying to do. And is the facility other ranchers can use Absolutely. as well? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, How many is, other ranches are you working with that can process there? Um, right now we're working with four or five different ranches. We've just gotten started. Like we said, we took over the facility in uh, uh, Thanksgiving 16, so November 16. Um, so we're just getting all of the, the P's and Q's put together on it. But um, it's open to all the ranchers, right? So we do either, um, we, we can third party, so you can bring your animals in and we can uh, process and return it to you with your own label. We can buy the animals from you and and sell oh, them under sure. our label. Oh, okay. Um, if you're a home user and want it just to have an animal processed and you take back home and share with friends, oh, um, wow. yeah. So it's a true fee for service third party offer, hmm. um, along with full service. So hmm. ranchers can just ranch, sell their animals, and then we take them the rest of the way for them, hmm. or like I said, return them on their label and or for home use. And um, that was super interesting when you were talking about before the show, kind of talking about the disconnect between the, the ranchers sometimes and then the actual 
the marketing that needs to happen. So kind of that, that connection between the ranch and the end consumers, and that's what the gap you guys are, are trying to fill. Right. Yeah, about eight or ten years ago, my dad <coughs> and I um, had a meeting of the minds. It was a short meeting. Uh, it was more <laughs> his mind than mine. But um, you know, I told dad, I said, we raise great cattle, and the only ones that know about it is you and I. And um, I, we got to go and sell our product. You know, I got to leave the ranch and go sell the product. And um, it's not something ranchers typically do. Mm -hmm. Or do we want to do, right? Yeah. We, we don't uh, move around in town very uh, very freely, if you would. Uh, so, but but that there is a disconnect, right? So the consumers don't get to go to the ranch, and the ranchers don't get to go to the consumers. And so um, the disconnect was, you know, Hawaii knew, uh, consumers knew in Hawaii there was a lot of good products to get, to be had, but didn't know where to get them. Mm -hmm. And ranchers knew there were people that needed them, but didn't know where to take them. Um, and so again, you know, Kuno is trying to be a part of that to bridge that gap, so so ranchers can be ranchers, and um, you know, the retail community doesn't have to buy a cow or a ranch to, to have local fresh meat. Um, and so, matching the product to the consumer is really something Kuno focuses on. Awesome. Uh, I definitely want to do a follow-up question on the uniqueness of that, but we're going to take a quick sixty-second break, and okay. we'll come right back. Yeah, I don't even think Hey, has your signal just been taken over or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, I'm Nicole Alexander Enos, and I was born three weeks ago. Congratulations on being there for me for some of the few weeks of my life. I'm starting a new show, The Millennial Mind, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the month of April, where we'll go over some of the reasons why millennials are some of the most anxious and frustrated people at the moment. Ah! Are you looking to get shrunk? Join us on Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I see couples, individuals, families, because you know why? Because we all have problems. And if you're curious about shrinks and what they talk about, come look at my show, Shrink Wrap Hawaii, and maybe you'll find your shrink. Aloha, and welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I am Matt, here with Justine, as always, always. sometimes, always. whenever we can. Always. Uh, we are talking to Bobby Ferraris. Ferra Ferrius. Ferrius. Man. That's okay, yeah. Ah, I really wanted to get that Portuguese right. name, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to practice that some more. Uh, with Kunoa, mm -hmm. uh, and the cattle company based in Kauai, and then also uh, here on Oahu. Yes. Um, so, wow, we still have a lot to talk about. Um, so if you can talk a little bit about your, well, I guess you had a question that you really wanted to get into. Well, I bet I mixed it at the break, but no. well, I want to get more. Okay, so there's a lot of things that are unique about, uh, you know, your uh, Kunoa mm -hmm. uh, with the raising the cattle as well as the processing. I'm also curious that when I first heard about Kunoa was uh, through Energy Accelerator. Um, I know they were recently getting into ag with um, renewable energy, and if you can kind of talk about where that connection is with the facilities and um, kind of the parts, uh, how that plays an influence and how that came about for Kanoa. Yes, uh, Energy Accelerator was, uh, was a great, was a great uh, step for us, stepping stone for us. Um, and just to explain, so Energy Accelerator is like an a incubation program for getting investment for startup companies? For startup companies, right. Um, and, and going through all of the process of startup companies, which um, were nothing that I thought were problematic, mm -hmm. but were very problematic in the, in the, in the sense of getting, um, getting our feet wet, if you would, in, um, you know, like one of the things were, were customer awareness, um, mm -hmm. which ranchers think they know exactly what people want on a, right. in a steak or in a, but, um, <laughs> We, we, it, what, what it taught me personally is that uh, you know, I am the seller, not the buyer. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have to be responsive to the buyer because that's mm -hmm. my business. I'm mm -hmm. selling. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I can't be the buyer and the seller. And um, when that paradigm shift happened, um, it made the path a lot clearer. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're, we're a little bit odd company 
as far as the energy accelerator goes, right, uh, you know, given it's so ag. Um, yeah. And we're typically, it's like more tech. energy tech yeah. type companies. Yeah, very, very cutting edge energy tech stuff. Um, and so how it all uh, pieced together is one is they were looking into ag a lot mm -hmm. because it's, it's one of those things that Hawaii really needs, like renewables. Um, but energy was a real holdback for the build out of our business, mm -hmm. um, the cattle industry. Is cold storage is so expensive in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we had to really focus on the ability to not let the energy costs run the business, if mm -hmm. you would, mm -hmm. or run it in the ground for that matter. Yeah. Um, and so the renewables and the efficiencies of energy uses um, has always been in the forefront um, of, of the business mm -hmm. of, of Kunoa. Mm -hmm because it's, it is the single most expensive thing in the business, next to the production side itself with the cattle. Wow. So yeah, Energy Accelerator played a big role, um, opened a lot of doors for us, um, mm -hmm. and um, continues to mentor us in the growth of the business, which is a, is a big thing. Um, you know, Hawaii is a, is a little place, and um, there's a lot of business that happens there, and um, they've just opened a lot of doors for us, introduced us to great people, and yeah. uh, they're just a great team. Yeah. Very supportive. Cool. And then again, I don't know if we specified what, what that's meant. Lots of solar panels on your processing facility feeding into the... Yeah, currently we have a uh, fairly large uh, PV system on, on the building, all installed, up and running. Mm -hmm. um, uh, almost cut our electricity bill in half. Wow. So, I mean, that's a big thing. That's yeah. a huge um, impact. Yeah, a huge impact. And uh, in the future, we plan to build a lot more. One of our uh, co-founders is a um, renewable energy, uh, solar specifically. Mm. And so, yes, as we get everything kind of put into place and uh, prioritized, um, renewables, a lot more panels are going to go up. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, a lot of roof space we have there. Yeah, yeah. Lots of sun, too, on the, south, on the west side there. Yeah. And the facility is in Kimball Industrial Park? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, Bobby, talk a little bit about the, the products. Um, that you're going to be focusing on um, some of the, the beef products? Well, uh, right now we're doing mostly a, a grind. Okay. Um, you know, the carcass is made up of mostly um, uh, hamburger, mm. uh, more commonly termed. Um, and so it's the anchor product that we're going to produce. Okay. Um, it's the most consumed product as far as red meat goes, and so um, that's going to be our focus product. Um, we're gonna. We're also gonna introduce a uh, a meat bar. Mm. It's kind of a cross between a uh, beef jerky and a uh, kind of a pepperoni stick, if you would. Um, mm -hmm. But it's um it's a nice clean protein bar, um, all local beef, mm. um, and so that's gonna be um, offered in stores here soon, also. Hey, you were saying um, before the show that you guys actually uh, ordered it and processed it and. Yeah, you have about 16,000 pieces on yeah, its way. We're going to so have, have a lot of it on its way, yeah. What, what store is it? Do you already have accounts set up, or where, where do you see um, it that being bar, available? That's not, um, we don't have any specific destination for those bars yet, but um, they're going to be in, the plan is um, mostly all the convenience stores, of course. Um, oh, wow. Grocery stores and so on and so forth, yeah. So this is something you see being available at like a 7-Eleven, ABC store? We hope. Um, we hope. That's our hope. You know, wow, that's great. Conveniently available. And that's a good, clean, protein, yeah. um, uh, between meal type of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So is there a premium price on it? Or is it more affordable because things are being done in-house? Yeah, or is there like a premium? It, it's, it's a premium uh, mm -hmm. product, um, uh, priced product. Um, it's not your typical beef jerky priced product. But um, it, it's a good, clean meat and so we think it's priced appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, like everything else, uh, volume plays into price points. And so hopefully, mm -hmm. if it's a good mover, um, it, it's going to become something uh, price point positive. Is it something you hope to export? Or is that already the plan? Or will it all be consumed in state? We hope. Um, we hope it's a take-home gift from Hawaii. Uh -huh. It's a very unique label, very Hawaii-focused. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to see, recognizable, that it's a Hawaii product. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we think it's going to be one of those uh, uh, cool products to take home. Mm. The label will be a keeper, we hope. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, Bobby, one thing we, we like to do is, is kind of have our guests uh, look into the future and kind of predict what's going to happen. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, obviously, like, where you see Konoa uh, in the next five years, I mean, a lot of exciting things are happening. Right. Just recently purchased the um, harvesting facility and uh, where you see the company going, but then also ranching 
um, in general, what's the, the future of ranching? Is this something that you're advising everyone to start getting into because now there's this new model in place? And you know, what, what's the future look like? Well, rancher by definition is an optimist. I mean, <laughs> it's not it's not a uh, Fortune 5 company that way uh, historically. But I, I see lots of positive things for ranching. Um, Hawaii is a great place. They're very supportive. Um, the, the local food drive um, has been phenomenal, right? Mm -hmm. It's been the light at the end of the tunnel that keeps ranchers and farmers doing what they do. Um, you know, farmers never meet the end consumer, mm -hmm. and so they're out there doing their thing day in and day out, and they never really see um, the, the rewards mm -hmm. that, that the consumers uh, and the smiles it puts on their faces. Mm -hmm. But as far as ranching, I think there's a lot of opportunity. I think there's, um, there's so much available lands right now in Hawaii. Um, I, I really believe that Kuno is bringing something to the table that will allow the ranching industry to, to develop quite a bit more. Mm. Um, and it's just about capacity. It's not that we have a magic potion that we're going to sprinkle on the business, but mm. it, it's just about there's more f available facilities now. And mm. so ranchers can take advantage of that. And then, you know, the, the other great thing is it's, um, that the consumers will be able to have more variety of products, you know, different ranches, different labels, different types of um, raising uh, production models um, that will be entered into the retail space. Yeah. Knowing, so, and then knowing kind of the conditions that are good for raising cattle mm -hmm. and knowing that right now we're about importing about 95% of meat, what's, the, what's kind of like a, a ballpark of what's available and the goal percentage for it to be from to be local we'll never be able to do all of the beef that's consumed in hawaii mm -hmm. um and that has to do with rising uh tourist numbers right i mean we're, we're just we're never gonna uh, the demand we're is never so gonna great. get ahead okay. of it mm -hmm. yeah but you know the goal i guess would be to be able to keep all the cattle we raise in hawaii in hawaii mm -hmm. um now there's the consumer number is there mm -hmm. um, and so can the question will be can Hawaii build the facilities can we build enough facilities on every island that will allow to be able to keep all the animals in Hawaii and so that's something we'll, we as ranchers will have to work on uh, diligently here in the years to come mm -hmm. but um, but I think it's possible I really do I really think it's possible I think it's um, it'll be, it would be the right thing to do mm -hmm. um, it'll show the ranchers that the consumers are supporting them Mm -hmm. And then when they see that support, they will answer back with the build-out of their production. Yeah. And so with the facility that you guys just built, mm -hmm. you're saying to be able to handle you know, more of the market, I mean, how many more of these, these facilities? Is it something that we would need like three more just on uh, Oahu alone? Or, or what, what do you think it's going to take? Well, the, the facility is uh, designed for 50 head a day. Okay. Um, single shift so there's quite a bit of potential there mm -hmm. for, um, for for growth and we're on seven acres there and we're on a third of it and so there's a lot of build out um, capacity there and mm -hmm. so um, it's a bright future right there there's um, there's a lot of expansion lots opportunities of growth, yeah. yes lots of growth opportunities mm -hmm. and you know the cattle industry is one spoke in the ag wheel uh, we mm -hmm. like to call it um, you know we We'd like to see the cattle industry support and be supported by the farming industry also. You know, byproducts of, of farmers is, is great cattle feed. Um, and I think it's a way that the two can work in uh, great harmony that way. And that was another thing you were saying too, is that you guys are, are collecting your own feed now. Yeah, we do a baling project on Kauai. Um, mm -hmm. So we bale a lot of local grasses to get us through times where we have to pen cattle up to sort them or uh, wean cattle. And so we, we don't import any commercial feed anymore um, in our production line. We do have some imported feed for our horses and stuff. But other than that, all the cattle feed um, is stuff that we locally harvest on Kauai. Um, and, and it's a great feed. It's a feed they're used to. to. Mm -hmm. So their little bellies are used to, to that type of feed. And so when we have to pen them up to do anything to them, to doctor them and or to sort them, like I said, or do anything to them, um, it's the feed they've been on the, that they're used to. Yeah. And you were saying that their bill before, so you used to have to actually import the feed. All right. And you're saying your bill was like a million dollars a year. Yeah, or something there like was that? a year when we were shipping on a lot of cattle at our place, and it was a droughty year. Yeah. And um, 
yeah, the feed costs were just enormous. I mean, the reason we got into the bailing uh, part of it is um, we weren't going to be able to feed, afford those feed costs the following year. Yeah. It was a downturn in the market, and we're short on feed, and um, we're shipping so many calves that um, it required so much commercial feed that we weren't going to be able to do it another year. And so um, called up some of my buddies that I rode with in the mainland and said, hey, I, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what we need, yeah. but we need to bail some grass out here. And um, there had been people that were bailing um, here and there, mm -hmm. especially when the dairy industry was going in, in yeah. Honolulu. They, mm -hmm. they would bail here, but not a lot of those guys were around. Mm -hmm. And so there was nobody for me to go and watch and uh, try to learn from. Uh, or, or get any used equipment, right? We had to bring stuff in from the mainland, but yeah. it has definitely saved our operation. It's been it's been phenomenal. Yeah, that's great. And then, yeah, there's a lot of other, like we are talking about uh, Monique, who's been on the show before, with yes. Nick and Calderi. I know that's something she's always been trying to figure out how she can get locally sourced. Yeah, feed. importing importing feed is hard, right? Because you, um, you know, anywhere else in the in the upper 48 if you run short on feed you can call and they truck feed in i mean right. they can truck it from as far as they need to yeah, yeah, yeah we don't have that ability here so as, as ranchers and farmers or uh, dairy men and women you need to really watch your feed supply and make sure you have enough stored um which ties up money and and nobody likes to just you know have money sitting in the barn so it's it's one of those things you have to balance but yes you have to be able to watch your feed source and make sure you have enough feed around yeah, yeah. All right, I think we're running out of time. We mm -hmm. might only have a minute, but one thing I want to ask quickly what, that we've talked about in terms of, you know, you talked about that face-to-face -face time that ranchers don't necessarily get with consumers, but we've talked a lot of farmers and ag tourism mm -hmm. is a big thing. Do you guys have anything currently or in the future where people can come on to your facility in 30 seconds? Yeah, the hope is to be able to be able to integrate the consumers and the cattle industry, right? Um, be able to come to the facility, visit, yeah. get a tour, um, and show them what it's all about. Okay, so that is in the future. Yes, yes, it awesome. Is. Yes, it great. Is. That wraps up our time. Sorry, great. to cut off right there. Well, <laughs> Thank you so much us. for coming on. Thank you for having Thanks, us. Bobby. Appreciate it. She kept like mumbling.